Director Daniel Rohrer was with Navalny in the months before his return to Russia, as recorded in the Oscar-winning documentary Navalny. And Daniel Rohrer joins us now from Los Angeles. Uh, what was your reaction waking up to the news today? Well, Ian, first and foremost, thank you for having me on the program. Uh, a lot of people were surprised to hear just how shocked I was. For anyone who's followed Navalny, who's seen the film, um, this this situation, this tragedy must seem like it's not a surprise. But in spite of that, I just was shocked when I heard the news. It seemed so random. It seemed like it came out of nowhere. Why now? Um, and after you know an hour or two of shock and disbelief, um, you know reality set in, and I was left with the, this this deep well of grief. For many of us, you know, he is a, a world figure, a person in a documentary. For you, he's somebody that that you know, and and you know his family, and and I I wonder what your, th you know, so the depth of your feeling today. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'm 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 again. I'm just struck at at how sad this is, and how sad I feel, and how angry I feel. Um, it seems so senseless. Um, um, and in spite of the fact that like, this is something that, that is not surprising in lieu of the circumstances, I still feel totally shocked by this. There's no reason or rhyme. It, it ha should have happened today. I don't know why it happened now. It's just devastating. And I, I think that my, my heart is breaking for Yulia, his wife, his daughter, Dasha, and his son, Zahar. I'm, I'm holding them very close to my thoughts today and for all of his family, friends, and the tens of millions of Russians who support him and love him and were hoping he would be the president of the great Russia of the future. Your documentary was so powerful, and there's a moment from it that seems particularly poignant today. You asked him his message in case he was killed, and in English he said, it's simple, don't give up. And then you asked him to, to speak to the Russian people. Let's play that excerpt. Do me a favor, answer this one in Russian. И здесь у меня просто очевидная вещь. Ну, не сдавайтесь. Не надо, нельзя сдаваться. Если это произошло, это означает, что мы необыкновенно сильны в этот момент, раз они решили меня убить. Ну и нужно использовать эту силу. Не сдаваться. Помнить о том, что мы огромная сила, которая находится под гнетом вот этих вот чуваков плохих, Лишь потому, что ну, мы не можем осознать, насколько действительно мы сильны. Все, что нужно для торжества зла, это бездействие добрых людей. Поэтому бездействовать не надо. Don't give up was, was his message. And, you know, when I, I look at that, and when, when he says those words, you realize he's somebody who's healthy and who's confident and, and who has a vision for the future. But... As you hear those words today, I mean, do you think he ever thought that, that this would pass? Did he think that this was a possibility? And you're, you're speaking, Ian, about his death, about the inevitability of his... Yeah. You know, look, Navalny was a smart man. He was not naive. He understood full well the danger of his work, his occupation, and his 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 insistence, you know, any opportunity to take a shot at Putin, he would take the shot. Um, he, he was an agitator. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, what he felt like he had to do uh, towards the mission to further the mission of uh, unseating this brutal, murderous president. Um, and so I, I would say that this outcome is, although not a surprise, this is not what he wanted. He didn't want to be a martyr. He has a family. He has two beautiful children. He wanted to, to, to live. He loved life. He was a very charismatic, happy, funny man. And this is not what he wanted. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's challenging to, to speculate about his internal thoughts and his internal life and whether or not he knew that this was going to happen or not. At one point in the documentary, you ask him the, the difference between between him and, and President Putin, and I want to play that excerpt as well. How is President Navalny different from President Putin? Well, my my major task as a president just to prevent, you know, this damn circle of re-establish of authoritarian regime. 
in authoritarian country, you are pro-authoritarian leader or you are against authoritarian leader. So we are in more primitive politics like human rights, freedom of speech, fair election. Daniel, that gives us a sense of what Russia would have been like if Navalny had been president. Uh, this is an impossibly broad question, perhaps, but what do you think the future of Russia is now? Well, you know, Ian, it is, it's my hope that this profound tragedy um, and the anger and grief that comes with this murder are transformed into action. You know, right now, things in Russia look bleak, but I'm reminded of that old adage, the night is darker, darkest just before the dawn. And it is my hope that Navalny's supporters and the, the, his staff and his family are able to turn this moment into something positive for Russia. Um, if Navalny were here, he would tell us all to stop crying, to take a shot of vodka and to get back to work because fighting for democracy is not easy and we need to be focused and keep our eye on the prize. And that's for both the Russian context, but also the rest of the world. We live in a context where the, the sort of tides of authoritarianism are rushing in and out all over the world. And as active citizens, we can't take our democracy for granted. And that's especially true um, in countries all over the world. Uh, you know, your documentary uh, focus so much more attention on Navalny, especially, I think, in the West. Um, and so to pick up on what you just said there, um, you know, as a Canadian living in the United States, do you think Navalny's message to the rest of the world has been heard, will be heard, that people are motivated to act outside of Russia? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not naive, though, Ian. Here in, in the United States, there are political factions who would seek to embrace authoritarian tendencies, um, who would seek to cozy up to Putin and undermine NATO. Um, you know, so here especially, we should not take democratic traditions of the United States for granted. Um, and, and I think that that's something that I hope people remember when they see this movie. Russia is one situation, but the rise of authoritarianism plagues countries all over the world. And again, active citizens can't be inactive. That's Navalny's final message at the end of the movie. And I hope that that's, that's what people really are reminded of and thinking about this evening. I know this has been a difficult day for many people, including you. And so I do appreciate you taking the time with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Ian.